Most schools in Arkansas are Google schools, so if you are a high school student, you're probably either being expected to use Google Classroom now, or you will be in the near future. But there's actually no reason to worry about this. I know Google has a really bad reputation when it comes to accessibility, but Classroom is actually fine. Everything works exactly how you think it should. Today we're going to look at Classroom on iOS devices, that is iPhones, iPads, and iPod Touches. There will be Windows and Mac tutorials coming soon, so keep an eye out for those if that's something that might help you. It is worth noting that Chromebooks are not a reasonable option for students with visual impairments. There is no good way to use them independently. If you are being expected to use a Chromebook, I strongly recommend either fighting to get another device or just purchasing one yourself. The base model iPad will do everything a Chromebook will do, and it will be much more accessible. And of course, you could get either a Windows or Mac computer, but Chromebooks are not accessible, and you will spend a lot of your time trying to figure out the accessibility features if you attempt to use those. So that being said, let's talk about Classroom on iOS. For privacy reasons, I can't show my screen. There is a lot of personal and school information splattered all over the Classroom app, so we're just going to talk about Classroom today. Hopefully, if anything, it'll just ease some anxiety about using Classroom in the upcoming virtual school year. When you open the Classroom application, you're going to need to choose which account you use. You need to choose your school email for this. For one, it is the email that you're going to get all of your Google Classroom invites to, and for two, it is the email you're going to be expected to use when you communicate with your teachers, and you need all of your school information in one place. If you're already signed into your school email on your device, you can just double tap it in the menu that will come up, and if not, you can choose to add an account and sign in with the typical Gmail sign-in page there. If for some reason you're already signed into an account when you open the app, VoiceOver will actually announce that. It'll tell you which account you're signed into, or if you miss that, you can touch and drag to the top right corner or tap once at the top of the screen with four fingers and then swipe two times to the right, and VoiceOver will announce which account you're using. If you double tap on that account, the Manage Accounts menu will come up and you can choose a different account or add a new one from there. When you sign into Classroom, you may or may not already have some classes in your feed, but chances are you will need to join more classes because you probably will not already be signed into all of them. So to do that, you're gonna do it in one of two ways. Either the teacher will send you an invitation via your email, or you will use a class code. If you get the email invitation, that will contain your teacher's name and the name of the class. There will be a join button, you'll double tap on that. It will open the app and you'll have to swipe right and double tap on join class again. If your teacher sends you an email invitation, it's typically in advance, meaning before the class begins. So if you get that invitation, you should definitely go ahead and join the class and check it out just to see what's in there. That will just give you a head start. If you don't have an email invitation before the first day of school, your teacher is probably going to have you join using a class code. This is a six to seven digit code with letters and numbers, and you will get that when you're in the physical classroom. So usually the teacher will write it on the board and the class will just all type it in at the same time. Of course, you'll need someone to read this to you, but I'm going to tell you how to navigate to the text field where you can type that in. So if you're in that list of classes that shows up when you open Google Classroom, you can actually four finger tap at the bottom of the screen and it will take you to that join class button because that is the last item on the page. You can double tap on that and voiceover should jump you straight to a text field where you can enter that class code with the typing method of your choice. If voiceover just jumps you to the join heading at the top of that page, you can simply swipe right until you find that text field. If the text field isn't editing already, you'll need to double tap on that before you can type, but then everything should be good to go. When you're finished typing the class code, you can either hit enter on your keyboard or you can four finger tap near the top of the screen and then swipe right two times and double tap on the join button. 
that class should immediately show up in your main list of classes. Once you're signed in to all your classes, they will appear in that list. You can swipe right to go through them and double tap on a class name to open that class. After the name of each class, you will find an options menu, but the only option in there is to unenroll. So you shouldn't need to use that unless you have a schedule change or need to unenroll from a class for some other reason. When you double tap to open a class, voiceover will jump to a menu at the top of the page. This menu is pretty much always there no matter where you are in classroom. It's pretty much always the first item, but we're going to keep on swiping and talk about that menu later. So if you swipe right, you'll hear about and then the name of your class. Next, you'll find a text field where you can share with your class. The things that you type there appear in the class feed for everyone to see. Swiping past that, you'll see all announcements and assignments from your teacher. These are organized from most recent to least recent. After each announcement or assignment, there's another class comment field. These comments are specifically for that announcement or assignment, but your whole class can still see those. You can also access that from within the announcement or assignment. If you double tap an announcement or an assignment, you can read it in full. So you can use the voiceover gestures at that point to scroll by link or character word or line in that big feed, you cannot. And in an assignment, you'll actually need to double tap to attach your work. To do that, you're going to need to four finger tap at the bottom of the screen. This is after you've double tapped to open the assignment and you should find a button that says expand your work session. Now this opens a kind of pop-up sheet and there are several important things in here. So we're going to talk about them. The first thing you'll find is an assigned button. The button is literally labeled assigned and it doesn't actually do anything. So you can just swipe past that. The next item is an add attachment button. If you double tap on that, you'll get options for what kind of file you want to attach to the assignment. So in there, you can choose to attach a file from Google Drive. You can attach a link. You can attach a file from your device, a photo from your device. You can use the camera to take a picture. You can make a new Google Doc, a new Google Slide, a new Google Sheet, or a PDF. And then there's a dismiss button at the bottom. After the attachment button is a mark is done button. You can use this if you've turned in an assignment in another way that was not Google Classroom. For example, if you did it on paper or emailed it to your teacher, you can mark it as done in Classroom so that you and your teacher know that you have done it and turned it in. The last thing in this collapsible assignment sheet is a private comment text field. This allows you to leave a comment to your teacher on this specific assignment. So if you were having trouble or you needed extended time or some other accommodation, you could leave a comment for your teacher here. Personally, I email my teachers because I find that they check their email and it's just easier to have a communication thread that way. But this is another option to leave a comment for your instructor. When you're finished doing whatever it is you needed to do in this sheet, you're gonna need to swipe left through everything in there to the collapse your work session button and double tap on that. You cannot four finger tap near the top for some reason here. So you'll need to swipe left back through everything. When you hit that button, voiceover will of course close that sheet and take you straight to a back button, which will close the assignment you're in and take you back to your class stream, which is that feed with all the announcements and assignments. When you're in that class feed, you can either touch and drag or tap with four fingers at the bottom of the screen and you'll find three tabs. The first one is your class stream. That's what automatically opens when you double tap on a class. The second is classwork. This just shows you all of the assignments and what you have and have not turned in. And the third is people. That lets you communicate individually with members of your class or just view the individual members of your class. I don't typically use those, but they could be helpful. Lastly, we're going to talk about the menu at the top of the screen. This is in the top left corner, so you can usually find it by touching and dragging, or you can tap once with four fingers and jump to the first item. 
it is pretty much the first item on the screen at any point in classroom, except when you have a specific assignment or announcement opened, but at any other time you can find it by either of those means. The first item in that menu is classes. This takes you to that page that opens when you open the classroom app. This is the one that has your classes listed with that option menu. The next item is calendar. This opens in Google Calendar, which to my experience is not very accessible, but if you do use that, you could get to it there and I assume see your class due dates. Next is a to do tab. That's only really accessible if you touch and drag, you cannot swipe through it. I do not know why. Next is a list of all your classes. You can double tap on each of those to open your class stream for those specific classes. After that, you'll find archived classes, which are classes you have been in in the past. Next is classroom folders. These open in Google Drive. There will be a tutorial for Google Drive coming up soon on the Challenge Solutions YouTube channel, so keep an eye out for that. But these folders contain any file or document that you or your teachers have attached in Classroom. I never use this either, but if you are looking for a specific file or document that you know is in Classroom and you need to find it quickly, this could be helpful. Next are the Classroom settings, which I've never needed to use, but they contain account settings, default apps, which would be the apps that you use by default to open web links and things like that. Notification settings, which could be useful because you can use those to control how you get notifications and what you get notifications for. This can be on device or you can get email notifications. So those settings are definitely worth checking out. And lastly, your Google usage ID is in those settings. The only other things in that top menu are an option to send Google feedback and a help button. Neither of these are particularly useful. Google typically does not respond to emails concerning accessibility and their help forum is not very useful for a voiceover user. But if you do want to leave feedback or if you are looking for something, you might try there. And I believe that is everything in the Classroom app. I hope this video has helped you, even if it just calmed your nerves. Classroom is really not scary. It is very easy once you get the hang of it. Just be sure that you have a device that you can use it with and that you can be independent on. And I think that wraps this video up. Please give us a like if you found this helpful. That will help the YouTube algorithm know that we exist. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, or if you just want to tell us about your personal Google Classroom experiences, you can leave a comment on this video or contact us in the contact form at challengesolutions.org. Keep an eye out for future blog posts, podcasts, and YouTube videos from Challenge Solutions. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.